Welcome back to the Whitetail DNA vlog. In this week's video, I'm out setting some trail cams today, some new ones, checking some cards on some spots that I haven't checked uh, in probably three, four weeks. And what I wanted to cover in today's video was five summer trail camera tips, five things that you should be thinking about when running cameras during the summer, and uh, five, hopefully these five tips are gonna help you when it comes to running trail cameras in the summer. So let's jump right into it. All right, so let's go ahead and cover these five trail camera tips for uh, running cameras in the summer. The first one I want to cover is to elevate your camera. As you can see this one's over my shoulder here. I'm actually standing on a rock, so I'm kind of elevated. But you want to elevate your trail cameras for two different reasons that I find most important. The first one is going to be to be out of the line of sight of deer. When you got cameras elevated, pointed down, you know, a lot of times if you got cameras just, you know, standard, you know, waist, chest height, you know, sometimes deer will be checking them out. They'll might spook them. You know, and that's very variable. When you have your cameras high, pointed down, you know, they're keeping out of the line of sight of deer and deer aren't gonna spook from them nearly as easy. Another thing that I like about having my cameras elevated is it's gonna help, you know, prevent theft. Actually, I was just kind of scrolling through this picture on this Exodus, you can look at pictures on the screen, going through the first few of them quickly. I actually noticed a guy walked right by, never even looked up. So I'm assuming he probably just walked kind of right under it, never even looked. You know, even though this one's probably only uh, six feet off the ground when it's six seven feet off the ground you know I've got it on a stick and pick you know you don't have any strap then so if someone's walking from behind the tree they're not gonna see the strap just gonna really help prevent theft the second thing that I want to cover especially when running cameras in the summer is to have fresh batteries you know a lot of times you're getting these cameras up you know for the first time of the year and a lot of times you just want to grab them throw them out make sure you got fresh batteries in them you know there's nothing worse than having a camera and going back to check it and it's dead or it wasn't working or anything like that so I definitely recommend you get fresh batteries in your cameras when you're getting them out in the summer. The third thing that I want to cover is make sure you're formatting SD cards. Formatting SD cards is really important, especially if you're running multiple different kinds of trail cameras. You know, you're going from SD cards, you're going from different camera brands into different camera brands. And even if you run the same camera, you know, I run pretty much all Exodus. I always format my SD card when I throw it in. Just make sure it's cleared, working good, and you don't have any issues. Because the worst thing is going, letting a camera soak, which we're getting to, um, and then coming back and checking it a month later and you had no pictures or the SD card malfunction or something like that. So tip number four is gonna be, you don't have to have these trail cameras exactly where you wanna hunt. So for a great example, like I'm on a new piece of property, I have permission on a ton of acreage here and uh, it's actually probably the biggest piece I've ever had permission on. But I'm not just gonna storm into the best spots to throw up cameras where I think I'm gonna hunt. I'm kinda just playing the edges, getting cameras in here, seeing what deer's around. You know, especially for the summertime, even if you're getting nighttime pictures of bucks, you know, it's not a big deal and you know they're in the area and you can adjust, you know, if, as you move into fall, as you start hunting, if those bucks are still around, you know, so you don't have to have your cameras exactly where you're going to be hunting. A lot of times, you know, people are only going to run trail cameras where they're going to have tree stands. I have no idea if I'm going to have a tree stand here. It looks like I got some pretty good deer activity, so then I'm going to have to decide if I want to go in further. Maybe I'm good right here on the edge of this property. I'm not exactly sure, but don't have it in your mind that you have to have your trail camera exactly where you're hunting. And the last tip, tip number five for running trail cameras in the summer is a big one for me, and that's to let them soak. You know, I kind of covered my last YouTube video, but running trail cameras, you know, you really don't need real-time data in June, July. You know, you might want that data at the end of the summer, but, I'd like to, but a thing that I like to do is have my camera sit for at least three weeks. You know, I actually checked this camera about three weeks ago and that's, this, that's you know, the quickest I'm gonna check cameras in the summer. Let them soak, stay out, get your cameras up, you know, get a bunch of them out if you can, and just let them soak. You know, if you need to run back there a day after setting it or two days after to just make sure it's working, totally fine. But then just let them be, let them do the work. You know, wait every, you know, you don't need to be checking it every week. Let them sit for three, four weeks at a time. And when you come back, check them, go through the data, and if you need to move them, then you move them. So those are my five summer trail camera tips. I know we got kind of a short little video here today. I wanted to bring this video to you now that we're, you know, towards, you know, the middle of the end of August. Um, just some things to be thinking about um, throughout, you know, the summer and even into the, you know, because this could be applicable to you even if you're running cameras all the way through September because you might live somewhere where you have an October 1st opener. So those are my five tips. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do me the biggest favor, if you enjoyed it, please hit that like and subscribe button down low. That means the world to me. 
and I'll be bringing you a couple more videos here. And then uh, in just a few weeks, I'm gonna be out in North Dakota bow hunting for opener. So I uh, appreciate it and I'll see you here next time. I guess the worst thing about not having a cameraman listening to audio. I have no idea if this lab mic's picking up the planes or not. I'm gonna go ahead and just guess they are. Seriously. Ah, the acorns dropping.